Welcome to a life-changing moment of truth, where the Word of God, through His man servant, Pastor Toya Demola, is handcrafted to heal, uplift, and bless you as you pay attention. God's Word comes shortly. Believe with all of your heart and stand a chance to testify. Stay connected. The law of success. And we started number 11. Last week we call it the law of mentorship. The law of of mentorship. We try to define who is a mentor quickly for the benefit of those of us who may be, you know, it's an impartation service, so it's not something, it's not a preaching jamboree. We said a mentor is a trusted teacher, a driver that can grant you uncommon speed in your journey of life. A trusted teacher, the best of all mentors is the Holy Spirit himself. Never, never forget that. Human mentors may not be perfect. They cannot be 100% perfect, but the Holy Spirit is always perfect. How many of you believe with that? So, the number one mentor is the Holy Spirit. It's not in the class of any man. He knows about your yesterday. He knows about your present. And he knows about your future. So, always recognize that with all the mentors you have, Holy Spirit must turn to be number one. And number two, you will need more than one mentor. You are the one who needs to know where you need to be tutored in your life. Uh, Somebody came to me after the service last week. He said, I need a mentor. I said, in what area? He said, tell me. I said, no, I can't tell you. You are the one who knows the area where you need to be coached, where you need to be tutored. You have to itemize it, and you have to look for someone who can actually add to you, who can actually be a blessing to you in that area. Why do you need more than one mentor? Let's go back to the time you were in school. The teacher who was teaching you chemistry was not your English teacher. Yes or no? The chemistry teacher is an expert in chemistry. And if you want to be a good student of chemistry, you're not going to ask the English teacher even to lecture you or to coach you. In the area of your marriage, if you need a mentor, look for someone who has what you call a successful marriage and let them mentor you. I remember before I got married, I located a couple in the church who are very close, but I like their style. You know, in Africa at the time, if you are a chartered accountant, you know, you are on top of your career. This man became a chartered accountant in 1971 at the age of maybe 22. And the wife became a chartered accountant in 1975, shortly after they got married, maybe at the age of 26, what have you. So they have a company, and any time we come to church, they were in charge of the finance of the church, so I work alongside with them. And any time it is the offering period, I will look at the man, he will make a sign language to the wife. It is the wife that will give the check or put the offering in an envelope. 
He will give him one, I mean, she will give him one, and she will take her home. Two envelopes. So one day came in from the African mentality we were brought up with that man should be in charge of everything in the family, especially when it comes to money. They demystified that for me. And I asked him question. I said, why is he that it's your wife? Anytime you want to do something, it's your wife that will actually approve the money I'm talking of their own personal expenses. I've watched you many times. Anytime you want to give offering, anytime you want to give somebody, you know, money, you know, they have given me money before, you know, because I was younger at the time. And he, she would, I mean, he would tell me, my wife will see you. So I thought you were the boss. I thought you were the man of the house. <laughs> he laughed. He now said to him, let me teach you something. That is where many people are missing it. Your wife may know how to manage money better than the man. Because I'm a chartered accountant before her, that doesn't mean I'm good with my own personal money. He said, if I have all the money in my hand, number one, I won't give account of it. I will just be giving it out. I'll just be giving it out. But my wife, it's not that she's stingy with her money, but she will give proper account of every money that comes to the family in a man, every amount of money they spend, what are they saving. He said, she will give you everything. I said, wow. I learned that. So I came up with a mindset that when I get married, it's not a matter of who is making what. Who knows how to manage money perfectly? Who knows how to manage money and you want me to tell you the truth? Amen. Somebody is laughing now. I think I'm doing a better job than that tango. So I manage money. But there are other areas where she's better than me. For your information, this one may not be something that is very popular. Who is the fellow that teaches us Bible study at home? even with the children. I don't have the patience for that. She's the one. Anytime we want to share the Holy Communion in the house with the children, if I ask you to come the first time, the second time, if you don't do, you know what I will do for you. She has the patience. She has the ability to say, okay, let's study the Bible. Okay, this is what we have to do. It, just to make it so simple. She's doing that. Unlike, okay, I'm the man, I must be the Bible study. You know, I can't be doing it in the church and at the same time at home. Let me rest. Somebody say amen to that. So look for, uh, look at it again. That is in the area of marriage. In another area, it may be your finances. It may be in your career. Somebody has been in a place where you wanted to be. There is no professor who has never become, I mean, who has never been a student before. A professor of today happens to be a student of yesterday, yes or no? Yes, sir. So why not let us humble ourselves? Let me give you another example. Uh, I've told you many times when this church started or when we're about to start, I have to look for somebody who will mentor me with the kind of job we are trying to do in America. So God brought Pastor Mati Ashimalo on my way. Something happened one day. I, I, I know Dr. Mordor because I know the, the ministry is going to involve both church and, you know, organizing leadership meetings and, you know, God spell everything out. And I knew Dr. Mordor does a lot of things, so I have to sit under his tutelage. So he called me one day and he said, you know, Pastor Toye, I cannot mentor you in church growth because I am not a pastor. I am an evangelist. And it was as a result of the question I asked him. I said, I needed somebody in America that I can look up to. He said, I cannot mentor you in that. Let's try it. And he began to take me all around America, you know, from here to Chicago to St. Louis, Missouri, you know, all over, all over. But I wasn't connecting. And one day, he went to Canaan land. 
to meet Bishop Oye, to preach in Canaan land, Bishop David Oyedepo. He just came, he didn't know that we know each other or whatever. He said, I know somebody from your country. You will love him the way you talk. I know the man is talking like that. You will love. I said, who is this man? He said, David Oye, I said, Oyedepo, you know. And, you know, and he wanted to take me there. I said, no, 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 I can't handle that one by, by myself. But look at what I'm saying here. It was him trying to lord it over me. When the Wisdom Center Church was about to start, guess what happened? He called me. He said, you know a little thing about churches that I don't know. What advice will you offer me? Dr. Murdoch. Before Winner's Chapel came to America, Bishop Oyedepo called me all the way from Nigeria. Hey, we've been doing churches in Nigeria and the whole of Africa, but we are now about to enter into the United States of America. And he has some questions for me that I need to answer. Those are the people we are learning from. So it does not matter whether your mentor is, you know, younger than you or they are older than you. It is you who wanted to learn something. Can I hear amen to that? So if Dr. Mono will tell me to teach him something about church growth, how to start a church, this is the man who has been in the ministry since when I was two years of age. Two years old. Asking me to teach him about church. If somebody like Bishop Oedepo will call me, say we're about to start a church in America called Winners Chapel International, but we can't just venture into that area. Hey, boy, what do you have to say? Guess what again? Something happened some years ago. We went to do leadership conference in Johannesburg. Pastor Chi was with me in that particular, you know, uh, journey. I was in my hotel room on 1 a.m. in the night, South African time. Bishop doesn't call up on Saturday morning, you know, last Sunday. He just called. He said, are you in America? I said, no, sir. He said, where are you? I said, I'm in Johannesburg right away. Is it Johannesburg or Pictorial? Either of the two cities we are. And he said... Uh, Dr. Kenneth Copeland has been talking to him seriously about leadership. Leadership, come on, teach leadership, 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 leadership. He said, we need your ministry in America. We need this, we need that, we need that. So he said, sir, I'm going to pray about it. He said, but when I was praying about it, the Lord told me, Toya Ademola is there. You don't have any business in coming to America. I said, why are you telling me that? He said, I have to tell you because that is your position. So what am I saying with all this thing? No matter how great you are, you don't know everything. Does that make sense to you? No matter how successful you are, you cannot stop learning. You cannot stop having mentors saying that, I think I have graduated. You have graduated in one aspect of your life. What about the other aspect? The only one who knows it all, somebody say who knows it all, is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And even the Lord Jesus Christ told us in the book of John chapter 5 verse 30, he said, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I did not come to do my will, but the will of the Father. So, now look at what Apostle Paul has to say. Come with me. Apostle Paul was talking here in the book of Acts of the Apostle. I mean, sorry, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Let's consider some scripture here. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. The Bible says, the things which you learn, 
and received and heard and saw in me this do, and the God of peace will be with you. That's a mentor speaking to his protege. How do you demarcate between a good mentor and the bad one? Because there are many of them today, you know, uh, you know, a friend and I were talking during the weekend, he said, you know, there are some people now, they are looking for proteges and mentor, I mean, and spiritual son so that they can be sending money to them. It doesn't work like that. Look at it. If anybody comes to you to say, I want to mentor you, that is fake. If anybody comes to you to say, I want to be your spiritual father, or I want you to be my spiritual daughter, that is fake. It is you who knows what to know in a mentor or in someone that you want him to mentor you. Are you following what I'm talking about? It is you who will go and meet him. Am I talking to somebody? And how do you know now, when you now know everything is teaching you, everything is saying, pay close attention, is he doing the same thing? Is he doing the same thing? If he's not doing what he's asking you to do, he's not qualified to be a trusted teacher. The Bible says in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1, he said, the former account I give, O T, O Vilos, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. He has to be a doer, Apostle Paul said, things that you have learned from me that you have heard from me, that you have seen me doing. I commit the same thing. Do it. Somebody say, do it. do it. And in chapter 3 of the same book of Philippians, verse 17, look at what it says. Philippians 3, 17. It says, brethren, join in following my what? Example. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, Join in following my example and note those who, those who so walk as you, have, as you have us for a pattern. Let's read it together. Everybody want to go. Brethren, join in following my example and those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. If you don't have a pattern that you are walking towards, like a great man of God said that, if you don't have someone that is inspiring you, you will soon expire. Somebody must be inspiring you. Somebody must be inspiring you. So Apostle Paul now was saying again, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, 1 Corinthians 11, he said, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. My pattern for living is Christ. And as I'm following Christ, I want you to follow me too. Who is your mentor in your business? I remember some of us here, they are, some of them are held us now, when they were still young, young people. You know, not so young, not so young. Many of them are working in hospitals and what have you at the time. And the teaching on Dominion Success Institute comes in. And we are teaching at that particular time, you must have your home business, you must have. And many of them came, they wanted to have what we call OMED group. And I sat down. I cannot mentor you in home health business because I'm not a doctor, neither am I a pharmacist or a nurse. But this is what I want you to do for me. Who are the people who have done this thing successfully? Who are still, who are still, be, I mean, who are, who are still doing it? And they are still breaking forth all around. I said, don't start any of this until you locate one. I don't care how much it will cost you. 
Don't look for them in the name of, okay, I will just go to their office. I want to book an appointment. If they don't want to see me, the first, I said, they don't want to see you because you don't have anything to add to them. You are the one who needs them. If they say there is no time, wait. Can you give me an appointment? I said, I want to know your mentor in the home business. And to God be the glory, all of them at the time, or many of them at the time, fine. And those are the ones that are still standing today. Some of them ain't time to eat. In the name of the one to make money. And no mentor, no nothing. And I told them, I said, hey guys, this is what I know a little bit of. Proper organization. I said, if the government gives you money, are you following what I'm talking about? Maybe they're supposed to give you $5,000 and they gave you $7,000. Tell me something. Governments are not, they are not crazy. They will come back for their extra $2,000 they give to you. I said, if it is Republican government, by the time power change hand, when they are doing all the thing, they will look for you. I said, make money with that $2,000. Put it aside. Let it be generating money for you. Maybe four years, five years, if they ask for it, oh, your 2,000. I don't forget. Okay, this is your 2,000. And then the remaining interest is your money. Down for you to just say, oh, these people are stupid. I, I, I gave them 5,000 something and they pay me 7,000. Oh, wonderful. Let me use it. No, 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 that's not that. So who is mentoring your, you in your business? Who are your role models? Who do you want to be like? If you are told, write the conclusion of your life, either auto or biography of your life, what will you say you have achieved? Who is inspiring you? We saw that Jesus was being inspired by God, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came to the world, he said, Whatever he hear from the Father and from me, he will pass it across to you. Nobody is an island. Am I talking to somebody? For you to succeed and maximize your full potential in life, God has arranged men on your path designed to bring out the best in you. God has ordained or arrange men and women on your path. They are being designed by God to bring the best out of your life. If you want your life to be colorful, look for mentors. It is very, very important. And let me say this thing to you. The higher or the brighter your destiny, you know, the tougher your mentor may be. Some of them, anytime you see them, they will shake you, I must confess to you. They will shake you. They don't, it's not that they don't respect you. But your mentor can see your future. You must have someone in your life who will look to you, eyeball to eyeball, and say, boy, sit up. Because if you don't, like I have said it before, God did not give you the spirit of independence. Independence is of the devil, but God gave you freedom. When you see somebody say, I'm a man of myself, I don't, I don't take no, no nonsense from anyone. You know, nobody can control me. I can control myself. That is a devil in the making. Who can look at you high ball to high ball and say, hey, sit down there. That nonsense you are doing will not pay you. No matter how high you may be, you will need somebody. That's mentorship. 
Nobody can talk to me. Even the pastor. Even, no, 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 no. You are just deceiving yourself. God did not give you the spirit of independence, but he gave you freedom. Go and check it. There is no nation on earth today who is independent, though they are celebrating their independent anniversary. Has it ever occurred to you? Can America, as big as America, can America do without any other nation? With all their might, but they are independent country. Look at what is happening in Russia and Ukraine. Has it affected the whole world or not? So the same thing happens to individual. You can't, you can't see a man. They say to us, you know, in the, in the elementary English language, they say a tree cannot make a forest. No man is an island. We need one another. Somebody say we need one another. You can't prosper without people. If you have a business and nobody's patronizing you, what will you do? A teacher needs student to teach. A doctor needs client or patient to treat. An attorney needs a client to represent in the law court. A pastor needs people to preach to. Am I right? So you will always need people. You will. God himself, he said, where there is no vision, people perish. And where there are no people, what happened to the vision? God said, I'm seeking for a man who will stand in the gap, but if there is nobody to sit in the gap, I mean, to stand in the gap, what happened to them? Destruction. None of us will be destroyed. So please, let's humble ourselves. Thank you for worshipping with us today. For your offerings, tithes, special seeds, or CTMI partnerships, use the following methods. Pastors are available 24-7 to take your personal prayer request. Kindly call 832-3790517 or 832-723-0854. Or you can email us at info at dominionlifestyle.org. If you would like to share your testimonies, send them to testimony at dominionlifestyle.org.